المشكلة إنه إحنا ظروف البلد صعبة ما في شغل بلبنان ما في مستقبل فبحس حالي فعلا بسجن كانوا عم بيقولوا يا ريت نعمل شيء له علاقه بالطبيخ. بدي كل شيء طيب عندي. بروجكت سوتش از ميريامز امبروف اور لوكال كوميونيتي بتحسي بحالك اكثر بتحسي بقيمتك اكثر انك انت عم تعطي اكثر اول اول ما ولا مره انا طالعه سواقه متخيله بهالوقت انا بدي اتعلم سواقه ابدا تجربه هي بتعطي للواحد امل لقدام احنا قدمنا كل اوراقنا على النافع محل ما بتتسجل التراك بس لازم يمضيها وزير الداخلي there are a lot of obstacles regulations and laws regarding these people it's unjust for them هناك تشديد على اعطاء رخص العمل لغير اللبنانيين قلت لك انا كل الاوراق انت فوتر لي كيه من عندي بده يكون عندك معك رخصه تقدر تعطيكيها فضل الواحد الان هول الستات متكلين على هالشيء كل لاجئ بحالة حلم دائما بحلموا بالحياة الأفضل. For them there is no plan B. Plan B is repeat plan A until it works out. حس إنه إحنا عم نعطي صرنا طاقة إيجابية لحدا تاني غيرنا. يعني مش ما بتقدر تجرب كل شيء. بتقدر تشتغل بأي شيء وهلا بالعصر اللي نحن فيه كل شيء عم تشتغل المرة. She's giving these people hope. الإنسان لازم يكون شوي جريء وشجاع إنه يجرب. نأمل أن تكون الحياة أفضل في المستقبل Let's invite Chef Melissa King out Hi, Hi Melissa Hi everyone How are you? Hi Amanda <laughs> Always good to see you I'm always happy to see Melissa She is also I think the first Whole Foods Chef Ambassador Which uh, is amazing yeah, and You might know her from Top Chef She was a finalist And I'm just blessed Because every time I'm with you I get to eat her incredible <laughs> food I don't know how I got this job But <laughs> happy to be back Well I'm glad to be cooking for you today And yeah. for you guys too yeah, so How's good. everybody so far? Good? Yeah, you excited yeah. for the Napa Valley Film Festival? <laughs> Who's seen a film yet? Has anybody? Oh, good. All oh, right. Nice. Fantastic. Well, Melissa, I love that you took inspiration from Thomas and his film to cook today. Yeah. So will you share a little bit with us what you're making? Yeah, I mean, I feel very lucky that I got paired with such a um, <laughs> inspiring, powerful film about women. And uh, so as you know, they're based in Lebanon. and. Um, the recipe I have today is sort of inspired by those flavors. Right. So we're doing a lamb, uh, Lebanese-inspired lamb kofta made with Posey uh, Farms lamb. Which it's is all grass-fed. It's delicious. We sell it at Whole Foods Market. Yeah, so and, great. Uh, really tasty stuff. And it's going to be paired with a butternut squash pomegranate salad that has some feta and a pomegranate molasses vinaigrette. It's like I told her what I wanted to eat today, <laughs> and she knew it, and she made it. So <laughs> I can't wait to see you make all of this. Um, so I guess I'll just jump in here, okay, right? Okay, that sounds yeah. great. Let's get this heated up. Are you guys tasting that dish right now? How is it so far? So good. Yeah? Good. The recipes are on your table, too. <laughs> and so are you starting you follow with the... Along. You're starting with the meat mixture. So, yeah, I'm starting with the ground lamb. Um, as I said, it's from Posey Farms, really delicious stuff, um, grass-fed. Have you been to the farm before? I have not. All I've heard is that it's amazing and that they have incredible dogs They're, guarding the sheep. That yeah, they have. and they do. Pyrenees Mountain Dogs. But really, <laughs> you know, great people, um, a small farm that we source yeah. from, but really delicious product that they're that – they're, um, What's the word? Not growing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> raising. Oh, raising. Okay, there. you're raising them. Um, so we have the ground, about a pound of ground lamb. If okay. you're not interested in lamb, you can use ground pork, you can use ground beef, whatever you like. But 
I, I think, you know, if we're sticking, going to be authentic, we should stick to the lamb today. I love that. Yeah, and I cut it sometimes 50-50. I'll do lamb and yeah. pork or lamb and beef if you want something a little exactly, milder. Exactly, because lamb is a bit lean, too, um, especially the grass-fed, so you can cut that with a little pork or, or beef. Right. Um, so here I have some caramelized um, onions and garlic. Okay. I just sort of slowly caramelized them on the stove ahead of time. Um, and then with some olive oil. Amazing. And let that chill okay. before you add that to the mix. But since we have the magic of television here, we can just exactly. keep going, right? Uh, we got some black pepper that we're throwing in. Okay. Some allspice. Nice. A little and warmer note. Exactly. And then some cinnamon. So yeah. yummy. I love that. And then we have some chopped parsley. Okay. So basically, kofta is like a ground, uh, it's like a meatball. Yeah. But they shape them in different forms. Um, so I think traditionally they kind of do logs, which is what you which have on your table there. Today. I'm just going to use my hands if that's yeah, okay. Yeah, no, of I like course. To get in there. Right. Um, that's how I would do it at home. Yeah, get that and season okay. it generously right. with some kosher salt. Right. And while you're shaping the, those, I just have to turn to the filmmaker because I was so moved by this trailer. I haven't had an opportunity to see the film yet. And obviously these women are amazing, but can you just share with us while we start working on this, how you, how you were familiarized with this project and how you wound up there? Yeah, it was, um, originally I was supposed to do a film in Libya years ago and um, everything went wrong in Libya and I couldn't do this film. It was a, right. it was a film about the first school that was going to uh, be free for girls to go. Wow. And so um, when that kind of fell apart, I said to this woman who runs an organization called El Fernar, if you ever come across another film that you think would, or another story that you think would make a great film, please let me know. And wow. so she called me and said, this woman is a refugee and she started a small catering business and she's contemplating a food truck. Oh my God. And she's going to run a Kickstarter campaign in a week. I said, I'll be there. Uh, so I literally, and my, my wife has gotten used to this, unfortunately, <laughs> but she just, I said, hey, I have to go. I'll, right. be in, uh, I'll be in Lebanon and um, I'm starting this film. So I followed her for a little over two years Are in the process kidding? of wow. trying to get the very basic rights to start a food truck. Un and it took that long. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, if you gosh. see the film, it's it's heartbreaking at times. Yeah. It's really yeah. amazing. So, and Do you know when they're showing the film again this weekend? Uh, I think they, show, they, they screen it again Sunday morning. Oh, so I good. just came from a screening, which was sold out, which is amazing, because you never have a sold out screening on a Thursday morning. And he showed up and was like, yeah. look at all of these and people I, here. And same here. I was just like, I mean, it's just amazing. The turnout is fantastic. And well, it makes me question what you people do for a living that afford <laughs> you this time. Who's Whatever on it is, though? I would love to have an application. Right. Someone's, some of you must be on vacation, right? <laughs> How many are local? Here in the, yeah, taking advantage of where you live. I love it. That's why we live here, right? So, so fantastic. So, Melissa, while... What so are you doing over here? Back you here. It up. Um, yeah, I just shaped them into little patties yep. today. You can do logs, you can do meatballs. If you do shape them into meatballs, um, you, you want to sear them, but then you also want to finish them in the oven in case they're not cooked all the way through. Right. But right now, I'm just doing little patties to make it make our lives a little easier. And I noticed, I don't know if any of you have seen the GE monogram induction, this is awesome, but it's right? pretty unbelievable. It got hot so quick. It's magical. I'm and like trying to control it here on this little yeah, dial. Yeah, it's, it's almost <laughs> so easy to use. We don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's, it's yeah. crazy. So um, you've got those going. Yeah, while those are searing, you want to get them nice and caramelized yep. on both sides. Um, I'm going to show you how to take down a butternut squash. So I don't know how take many down. of you... Take down. You know, I, <laughs> I, think a lot of, like, I don't know. A lot of people are intimidated. intimidated by these, right? Right. So, I mean, I don't know. It's like a pumpkin. It's um, got this rind on the outside that you kind of want to remove. So what I typically do is I cut the top off. And she's working, obviously, with Cut a really sharp off. knife. Exactly. Right? It helps. The base of it has seeds. The top part is all flesh. So I usually like to cut it right in the middle so that I can separate the two. So it's flat. And then you kind of treat it like a melon. You kind of cut around the rind and uh, shave off that skin. I always joke, this is the one food that I buy at Whole Foods already skinned and cut for me. Because it is a, it's a lot of, it's a workout, right? And I tend it to is. use it a lot Definitely in the fall. Definitely need a sharp knife. But um, Cut look right it down quickly. the middle and you got the seeds here that you can okay. just scrape right out. Great. Like a pumpkin. And you know, for this recipe, if you don't have butternut squash, you can um, kind of explore some other options. You can use acorn squash, okay. you can use delicata squash. 
Um, what else is out there? I mean, any type of any winter squash, squash will work. work. Yeah. I love the texture of this, though, a little firmer, right? So even how she presented it today, yeah. I, it looks fantastic. That's great. And it's so versatile. You can yeah. puree it, turn it into and a soup. And same thing with this piece. Okay. This one has no seeds on the top part of the Got butternut it. squash, so it's all flesh. Gorgeous. And then for this recipe, you can cut them into whatever shape you want. You can dice it. You can slice it. Um, but we're basically, I guess right now, I can just slice it real quick. Just cut it right in half She's here. Keep going, right? We can cook it and yeah. use it later. Ooh, a lot of arm. <laughs> She's arm a workout. Muscle here. Okay. So, <laughs> is this something that you are just riffing on? Is this your own fall inspiration? We're so lucky yeah. to live in a place you where know, you can I, access I all of this. Inspired by just what's in season right now. So you know, we have all this beautiful winter squash. Mm -hmm. We have some pomegranate seeds that are coming up around November and. Um, yeah, I wanted to just kind of keep it fall inspired. Uh, it's gore it's beautiful. And as I look at all these components, it's just so simple, but it's so gorgeous. And to look at all of these colors and textures together is pretty amazing. So I usually just um, drizzle a bit of olive oil, a good amount, okay. um, just to coat it. Sure. Some salt, some pepper, which I had thrown into the. We've got oh yeah, the mix. It's, it's, <laughs> and some cinnamon it's as well. <laughs> Um, some warm spices, toss that right. together. You can do some smashed garlic and herbs if you have that. If you don't, not a big deal. Um, lay it flat on a sheet tray, pop that in the oven for, uh, I, I do about 450 or yeah. 425 when I roast my vegetables and, until they're golden brown. So it, it'll take maybe 20 minutes do or you so. Do yours on convection as well. I noticed these are convection ovens, which I it love. It does help. I, yeah, yeah, you get crispier. Help. They bring, I feel like it caramelizes your veggies more. They're, they taste so delicious. Exactly. So, so good. I'm giving these a little flip here. So Thomas, I have to ask you, spending two years there, and what were the foods that they focused on? Did they just do really traditional things? I don't know. You have it was no so, idea. Every time I went, there would be a table like this full of food, and oh. I thought, well, what are you, who are you catering to? Oh, right. no, this is for you. Oh, it was just wow. fantastic. And right. I love the grape leaves. I love the, I mean, it, all of the food was just amazing. Remarkable. And, and they were always, you know, they were so happy to bring it to me. And, it, and honestly, you know, I think that's the one thing that I have found in all of the screenings. You, you, we screen the film and then you bring people around the table and yes. suddenly they have some commonality of things to talk about. The food helps them you know, tell their story yeah. and it helps bring out stories that maybe you've never heard of and generations of stories. Um, it's, it's been quite amazing. It's always the great unifier. I say sometimes that people are like, I'm afraid to have people over. I'm like, people just want to be invited into your home and to be able to sit at a table together together and enjoy it. And it's so it's really, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's so great. And, and Melissa, your friend Padma Lakshmi loves, <laughs> loves, loves this film because oh, well, of the way that yeah. the, the way that it brings you know it brings people together around a table. It's really amazing. fantastic. I love her. <laughs> That's terrific. That's amazing. So Melissa, what component have we got here? So have you worked with pomegranate molasses? I haven't. It's funny yeah. they sell these at Whole Foods. People always exactly. think I shop with crazy ingredients. They're I'm like, like I bought I it all there. This? Exactly. Yep. So you can get this in Whole Foods. It's usually where the harissa paste is and like the jarred curries and all those fun flavors. Right. Um, so we got some pomegranate molasses okay. and here. And just for depth of flavor, you like it? It's yeah, really concentrated. Yeah, it's got a bit of sweetness. It's got, yeah, like, as you said, depth of flavor. It has a bit more acidity to it as uh -huh. well. Okay. Um, and I'm adding some, a little squeeze of lemon juice to, to the vinaigrette. Right. This is for the salad. Okay and also some champagne vinegar. I like the pomegranate molasses. And just, it's just whisking that together and then some chopped shallots. Gorgeous. And I usually like to let my shallots kind of sit in this marinade right. for about a minute or two. Um, it almost like pickles it. Yep. So that you don't have that astringent sort of uh, oniony flavor. And the version they got probably tasted so amazing because they had time to let them sit. Yeah, right? let that so. kind of hang out. Right. And then after a minute or so, you whisk in your olive oil. Okay. So Stacy, as you're seeing all these flavors together, what are you thinking about it going with the wine? A good pairing or is this challenging for <laughs> Absolutely. you? Absolutely, no. I hope everyone has been trying the wine as they've had um, little bites of their food. I know this guy has already taken his whole food down and I had to remind him to try <laughs> I could the eat wine. Like seven I think of these we can eat wine to see how the pairing went. But um, if you have any food left, you know, the, the pairing the lamb with the Syrah, um, one thing about Syrah that makes it such a great pair is that it's, it's, it's a big tannic wine, so it has structure to hand, hold up to this, um, you know, strongly flavored fatty meats. Wow. But a lot of people say that, you know, lamb is, is sort of gamey and it's very strongly flavored, but 
I think when, when these two um, items are paired together, you taste not the gaminess, but the purity of the ingredients and the, the herbs that are all in here. Right. Like tasting the meat, you know, you get, you get the very meat, the fatty flavors, but then pairing the wine with it that brings a little bit of the acidity, um, some acidity into it. I'm suddenly tasting all of the herbs and spices that went into this, this delicious This is meatball. the second time I've heard this today. I've not thought winemakers and love the herbs. With, oh, like yeah. It really can <laughs> accentuate the flavors of it. I've never really thought about it, but... Yeah sounded funny how I said that. Yeah, but alternatively, <laughs> if you have a bite of the hummus with the feta and the, um, the pomegranate seeds, those pomegranate seeds are so acidic and they're really, really bright right. that they bring out the um, brightness and fruitiness of the Syrah. So huh. all of a sudden you oh, go from nice. this really dark wine to this really bright and fruity um, sort, of, uh, sort of wine. So the tasting the wine with the lamb as opposed to tasting it with the hummus and um, pomegranate seeds are two completely different experiences. So if you have any food left, I suggest trying them <laughs> separately. Thomas does uh, not. Yeah, I, I will also say that these are conversations we never had inside a refugee camp. Yeah. <laughs> this like, this is <laughs> nobody, a luxury. nobody explained it like this. Maybe yes. they did in Arabic, but I'm quite certain <laughs> they did. You missed that part yeah. most definitely. You were busy working. Yeah, when I was visiting Posey Farms, uh -huh. they did explain that, like why some people think lamb is gamey. Yeah. And and because um, apparently lamb, there's not much regulations on how they raise the lamb. Yes. So some lamb could be, you know, a year old and some could be like three years old. Right. And it's like a sheep at that point. Yeah. And uh, that's where that gaminess comes from. So the younger the lamb, the sweeter the meat and uh, the more mild the flavor is. That's, it, yeah, it's really Yeah, really, um, they do a great job at making sure that they have those sort of restrictions. I think this is where we find out, too, so that where we source delicious. our food matters, right? Exactly. Because they yeah. also say, like, the happier the animals and the better surroundings they have, the better the meat actually tastes. Less Absolutely. stress hormones. It's fascinating. Um, so here is the roasted pomegranate uh, squash. How did you do squash. that? It's magic, magic right? <laughs> <laughs> so pre-roasted. Oh, um, you're going to put it in the vinaigrette. I put it in the vinaigrette, and I add some toasted pine nuts. Okay. Let's see. And then this is something I love to just get in the seeds. bulk aisle because you don't need a lot of pine nuts to add a bunch of flavor. Yeah, just not? throw them in there. Delicious. And then some fresh mm. mint leaves. Mint. Is mint as prominent? Where I mean, is it in everything you were eating there? Or I yeah, I love yeah. mint. I, I use salt. it a ton. Season that up and just coat that, dress it nicely. Okay. And then, let's see, where's my plate here? Oh, oh she's, she's got to go right here. Gorgeous. This is going to be beautiful on this. So we just plate Hot. that right up. I'm always interested in people. I, I do cook for a living, but I don't consider myself a chef. I, I'm a cook. <laughs> you make things so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I just, sprinkle the feta last, because if you, you sprinkle, if you put that, if you mix that in there, it just kind of muddles all together in. too much, and the doesn't look is nice. See, this is what makes you a champion. Yeah, Computer, I'm too. Of these <laughs> so oh, the crumbled these feta. This is gorgeous on its own. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you're vegetarian, this is a great option for you. I'd serve this at Thanksgiving. And wow. And then we just throw our little kofta right okay. on top. Amazing. And that's pretty much the dish. And I mean, we have a side of cucumber yogurt that I think. It's pretty easy to make. It's got ginger, um, oh, wow. cucumbers, just kind of grate it all in there uh -huh. with some lemon juice. Okay. Salt, pepper. I love that contrast garlic. when you've got the warm with the yogurt. And, and then my favorite is a, a Whole Foods Market hummus. <laughs> <laughs> my kids eat that by the bucket. I buy that every week. It's uh -huh. like my staple in my fridge. So we were just talking how you can here. dress it up a little bit when Chef Krista was up here. You put a little, she had dried olives and made and ground them up. Just sprinkle a little of that on top with some olive oil and it's all fancy. Yeah, and then you just drizzle a little olive oil right oh there on gosh. the hummus. That even is around so gorgeous. All of that. There we go, and that's the dish. Wow. Pretty, pretty. Chef, incredible. I mean, yeah. she just knocks it out of the park. There. I love it. Can you guys see that? I don't know. Let's see here. Someone's lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Does anybody have questions about the food before we talk more about the wine and the film itself? Um. No? Quiet, you're just enjoying it. Come on, it there's got to be somebody Nothing out for, there. You can I, I'm like, you could ask her anything. You can ask me anything. <laughs> top about her food life. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to know Top Chef Right questions. here. When it's done. Yeah, good question. 
Um, you know, as, since I shaped them into patties, they're going to cook pretty quick. Um, as you saw, it was about maybe a minute or two on each side. Um, but I usually go for kind of like a medium. You don't want to overcook it too much. If you go past medium with lamb, it just gets really dry. Yeah. So I, I like to do mid-rare to medium. Okay. Um, how I know that? I don't know. She, That's like, it's like so... It's in her. In, yeah. So <laughs> how do you know? Like <laughs> I, Same thing. You know, you learn all these little tricks like, when you, go to, you can like, touch it. And you can trick. feel it. But I think when you're working with something like kofta or meatball, I frankly just open one and see if it's where I want it. Yeah. You know, I'll pull it out before I think it's done. <laughs> So, uh, well, there is a good, destroy I one. mean, good point is like when you do mix it, you do want to cook off a little piece, taste it, make sure the seasoning is is the way that you like it. Right. Because if you sear them all off, then and then you can't really go backwards. Exactly. So it's always nice to sear a little piece off. That, and I think if you haven't worked with grass-fed beef or lamb before, it cooks differently as well. It cooks it faster. It cooks quicker, yeah. So you have to practice, too. You know, it's just, it's a new thing. So if you work with Posey or any other brands like that that create beautiful grass-fed beef and lamb, you just need to watch it and, and take it out faster than you typically would. Yeah. To see. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, turning to this side, I do think, well, I haven't even tried the kofta yet, but oh, what do you yeah. think of it with the wine? Let's say her. Can get Delicious. In on this. Happy. I, I, when people are quiet, I figure they are happy because they're eating and drinking and just enjoying the company, right? It's so good. But I would also love to know, can you tell us a little bit more about where these women are now and what they're doing? Um, their food truck has been very successful mm -hmm. they've uh they really every day they have a new locations that they go to for lunch and they um and they and they work from locations where they they let people know that they'll be there on monday they let people know they'll be there on tuesday so it's been really great um they've built a school a preschool on the back of this film which was our goal from the beginning and so we said we will help you do this and so we got a grant to build the school so there's 150 kids that can now go to school that weren't able to go to school when we wow. started uh, that preschool just opened wow and um, to support that preschool there's a cookbook and this cookbook, which is Stephanie it, is bringing out yeah, now. Rumor has it it's yeah. arrived. Oh, my gosh. This cookbook is actually, we're selling it today, but it's also on Amazon. It's the Sufra cookbook. Mm. I will give this one to Melissa so that you Thank can you. have it. Um, mm -hmm. But it's this really amazing cookbook, not oh just mm. because of the recipes and not just because of the cause, but it really is a visual tour of the camp as well. And so you really see it uh, into the lives of the of the people who live there. So um, it's $40, but like I said, the proceeds go to supporting the school, uh, desks, teachers, so on and so forth. So um, Gretchen's over there, and she has some available. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> so Gretchen's selling it as, you, as you're walking out. How many people a day are they serving? I have no idea. Thousands? I have no idea. Hundreds? No, because they have, you know, they have 22 women now that are uh, nearly full time. Wow. And, um, and so they have a catering business and they have, I mean, it all kind of gets commingled. But now wow. uh, Miriam is going to, Which there's nine other yeah. camps like this. So Miriam is going to those other camps and showing them how to replicate what they've done so that in nine other places they'll have kind of the same thing. So she's a, really a, a true social entrepreneur. It's amazing. I was going to say, isn't it amazing, amazing when you want something and you have an idea that she was not going Relentless. to stop? Up until she made it happen. Relentless. It's yeah. remarkable. Remarkable. Thank wow. you. And it always comes back to food changing people's That's lives. Right. That's I right. mean, it's just, so, she just wanted to cook her food. Also, a side note, this film is, um, we've been asked to screen at the Vatican December 5th, which never happens. Never wow. happens. Congratulations. Uh, Miriam will open Amazing. the screening because it's one of the few places, countries that she can get in. Uh, and so uh, imagine a woman in a hijab opening the screening at the Vatican. That's um, awesome. But then there's, if you go to a, a website called breakingbreadevents.com, then you can also screen anywhere uh, around the country and you can support people that want to screen to use the film and food to bring communities together. So the idea is basically uh, to stop the refugee problem, we need to first turn off the faucet. And so we're hoping that this is th exactly that, that it brings communities together and understanding of culture and food and and um, kind of like-mindedness, so. Oh, how lucky are we to have you participating in this weekend and sharing your work with us? Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thanks very for having me. much. Wow, That's incredible. Exciting. I just had a chance to that? taste this. This is delicious. <laughs> Melissa, this is how I want to eat every day. Please come over <laughs> as soon as it's done. You got it. I just love how you combine these flavors. It's really, really delicious. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. 
Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions? I see lots of happy faces out there. I know, right? It is good. <laughs> you can come talk to Melissa. Yeah, talk to please. all of us if you have afterwards. But thank you all for taking time out of your day. I hope you enjoy the weekend. And I want to make sure we thank all of our amazing sponsors, Cuisinart, who's got a beautiful setup back there, Monogram, Whole Foods, Whole Foods Market. Whole Foods Market. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Paula Leduc Catering. They have created all of this food for you. So Paula Leduc's team is doing all of the cooking and the serving of this and minor family wines as well as a huge participant so thank you so much for being here today for our demo thank you enjoy the weekend thank you oh delicious thanks can i have another bite yeah (laughs) go for it